Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to Everybody Eats. My name is Avi and today we're going to be reviewing Matt Reeves' The Batman. There have been numerous iterations of the Cape Crusader for decades, yet Matt Reeves comes along hot off the Planet of the Apes trilogy and crafts what might be the best on-screen depiction yet. Though Christopher Nolan adapted the hero in a bold fashion, his trilogy focuses on grounding Batman into a more realistic story world, losing some comic book sensibilities along the way. The Dark Knight still remains not only as one of the best comic book adaptations to grace the screen, but is simply regarded as one of the most influential films of all time. Reeves's The Batman feels the most resonant with The Dark Knight in terms of thematic context, but he takes a wildly different narrative approach that feels reminiscent of a neo-noir coated with a modern director-focused superhero tale. And it's one that doesn't feel skeptical of the source material truly feeling as if it understands Batman enough to put him in situations that may have been deemed even too goofy for Nolan's franchise. Which is a good thing. The film stands on its own and feels incredibly unique, even though it features the most rebooted live-action superhero of all time. And that's a feat on its own. In an age of standardized superhero films, thanks to the MCU, it's incredibly refreshing to feel a director's artistic vision within every frame in a film like this. Reeves is able to breathe more personality into the Batman than either of his latter two films in the Apes trilogy, and it's both endearing and impressive seeing him refine his skills as an artist. His vision is explicitly clear in The Batman, to show a deeply brooding side of Bruce Wayne we haven't seen before on film. And though the film is advertised as this 90s, post-grunge, nirvana type outing, it just feels equally as optimistic by the time the credits roll. Bruce Wayne is on year two of The Gotham Project, dressing up as a mass vigilante and beating criminals to a pulp damn near every night. He thinks fear is what's gonna save Gotham, but he learns he must become something else entirely. Something more inspiring. Hope. The film serves not only as an origin for Batman, but more so an origin for Bruce himself, which I'm sure will be expanded on in further sequels. When it comes to Reeves' screenplay choices, however, there is some nuance to be desired. The audience sees much more Bat than Bruce in this film, yet Reeves still feels the need to explain why this is the case in a manner that feels as if the characters on screen are preaching to the viewers themselves. Blatantly spelling out not-so-subtle inferences like this sometimes feels as if the film is still held back being a superhero film. Which is unfortunate because it does so much to advance the genre in the first place, while still remaining true to its core. But as far as the rest of the thematic context and winding narrative goes, this feels like a minuscule blip to me, and didn't hinder either of my viewing experiences. This is a sprawling neo-noir epic of a superhero film, and Matt Reeves shoots for the stars almost entirely successfully. As for the look and feel of the film, it's utterly flawless. Translating Gotham into this hybrid between grounded realism and one of gothic nature we have come to know from the comics pays off really well. In its execution, not only does it feel entirely unique, but aesthetically perfect for Reeves' take on the Cape's Crusader. Burton's films feel a lot more playful in terms of Gotham, while Nolan's mirrors a city that essentially could exist in our world, each matching the tone of their direction. Reeves has no intent to convince the audience that this Gotham could ever exist. It's purely a fantastical setting that strives to strike resemblances within our society as well. And with Greg Frazier's brilliant DP work, together they bring to life the best looking Gotham to date. Chock full of brilliant shots that truly feel like they put that blockbuster budget to good use. Robert Pattinson plays off this version of Bruce Wayne in Batman perfectly, as if he was born to play this role. The screenplay itself gives him a lot of space to truly give a nuanced act, as he is known for, given his tremendous performances in The Lighthouse, Good Time, and even High Life. His Bruce Wayne is a damaged one, and much less of an established persona than that of his counterpart, but the narrative allows both sides of him to complete their respective arcs, meshing into one by the end. Where Bruce lets his vengeful vigilante loose throughout the picture, by the end he realizes that he is losing the part of himself that makes him human. And though he must transform the Batman into something that brings people hope, he must do the same as Bruce Wayne. It's a brilliant message that defines perfectly why this hero has stood the test of time. Though he is a human that's been through tremendous pain, he must prevail as a symbol for the people not to lose hope, as he once did. The film itself, though a sprawling epic that definitely takes itself seriously, is not humorless in its approach either. Batman's interactions with Selina Kyle, played by Zoe Kravitz, and Gordon, played by Jeffrey Wright, all show a brighter side to the character, contrasting of that when he's alone. And as the film progresses, his relationships with these people garner more optimism as well, showing the character subtle changes before the finale. He knows he can't do this alone, and there are good people willing to help. That said, Kravitz and Wright play their roles tremendously, and I'm not sure there's been a superhero movie cast as perfectly as this one. Colin Farrell's Penguin steals every scene he's in, and Reeves utilizes him perfectly, ensuring that even with another big bad, 
the film doesn't feel overstuffed. And with Michael Giacchino's beautifully resonant score pulsating with every story beat, it's hard to not think of this film as an experience in itself. Matt Reeves has truly crafted one of the best iterations of The Cape Crusader, one that will continue to garner acclaim in the future. The Batman is a film so proud to wear its comic book origins, but unafraid to evolve them especially in a manner that doesn't feel cynical about the source material in the first place. This is a film that will make audiences reminisce about the creator-focused superhero movies of the past, as well as what the future holds for the industry. In a filmscape so dominated by the MCU, the Batman takes the risk to throw convention out the window and truly let itself bask in its own authenticity. It is not only one of the best depictions of the character we will ever see, it will continue to stand its ground as one of the greatest comic book adaptations of all time. I cannot wait for the sequel. And for all those reasons, I'm gonna have to give Matt Reeves, the Batman, a four out of five. It's an amazing experience, one of the best superhero movies ever made, and I genuinely cannot wait to see how he evolves the story world. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. This was Everybody Eats. My name is Abby. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.